Hey guys, welcome back to more Let's Play Pikmin 2. In the last episode, we got like, I think, two-thirds of the way through Gloon's Kitchen. In this episode, we're hopefully going to be finishing off Gloon's Kitchen, but first things first, I'd just like to say that uh, we got two sub-levels left in Gloon's Kitchen, including this one. And I'd like to say, this is definitely, without a doubt, one of my least favorite sub-levels, not just in this dungeon, but in the entire game. And it might be obvious right away what that reason is. It's these annoying uh, armored cannon beetles that basically hide in these piles of dirt throughout this sublevel, and they shoot. They come out and they shoot these boulders at you. They are very annoying, and they are the reason why I've heavily disliked this sublevel. Like you basically, in some layouts, including this one. Um, it is almost impossible to not be safe from them unless you destroy them. So we're going to have to quickly deal with these guys in order to make this sublevel, you know, more easier on us. Thankfully, we got some barriers here to protect us, but it's not enough, man. We need to kill these guys. Um, but yeah, these guys are very annoying. You literally have to rely on the purple Pikmin in order to take care of them. It's just, it's terrible. But hopefully we're going to take care of them, and we're also going to be very careful in the process to make sure no Pikmin die. And let's see. Yep. Okay. There's one taken care of. This is actually my um, second tape of the take of this sub level because when I originally recorded this episode, which was like a few months ago, um, I had a failed take of this episode because I did. I ended up losing a lot of Pikmin. Actually, scratch that. Make that one. I literally canceled the recording of this sub level just because of one Pikmin dying. But that Pikmin happened to be purple Pikmin, and I'm very, very stingy when it comes to. Um, losing white or purple Pikmin because they're a lot harder to, you know, uh, to reproduce than, uh, you know, other types of Pikmin are. So, yeah, we're going to be protect. You you guys will see throughout the rest of SLP how very protective I get purple and white Pikmin. And so much to the point where if I lose even just one of them, I will actually um, reset the game and restart the sub level because, yeah, that's just. That's just something I do. It's a habit that I acquired, you know, and through many years of playing this game. So, you know, just letting you guys know that. But yeah, it has been a few months since I recorded this LP last. And, but, you know, from those of you who are watching the LP, it's actually publishing in a way that makes it so it's not going to seem like that because this episode is literally going up this, the day after episode 19 goes up still. Yeah, I just wanted to make, let you guys know that, so that means that the commentary from now on will be more consistent with the times. Um, but yeah, basically the main two enemies we're going to be dealing with on this sub level are the cannon beetles and these dwarf bull bears. So yeah, those are the only guys you have to worry about on this floor. And that, it's just a regular floor. But yeah, just the, the way these things are designed is just what makes it so annoying. It's like so, e so difficult to get the Pikmin up to those guys because of... You know, like how these these uh, things are designed, like these uh, barriers that they have. Like these guys, yeah, they don't mess around, that's for sure. Like they literally build these freaking barriers so that they can just attack enemies. I mean, like they can kill, you know, innocent creatures that aren't their species. I mean, like, I don't know, like, why would, how could, I don't know. Let's just say that the uh, the organisms on this planet are a lot more intellectual than we realize and we can understand. I guess that's just the best way to put it. Um, let's see. And there's also, okay, not only that, but there's also some of these um, dirt piles might not have cannon beetles in them. So that's another thing to, you know, think about is that some of these don't actually have cannon beetles inside them. But there's also some um, very, like, occasional... Um, occasions where they don't appear at first, but when you start throwing Pikmin, uh, like if you start throwing Pikmin over them, then they actually come out to their dirt piles. It's actually hard to explain, but sometimes they will just kind of try to ambush you and be more a bit more tricky about their placements and whatnot. It's just, it's a hard thing to explain, but, you know, if I actually had a scenario where that happened, I could you know, show it to you guys, but I don't think we will encounter that because I'm basically just going to be slaughtering these guys as much as I can so that we don't have to worry about losing any Pikmin, especially purples and whites. Don't get me wrong, I, I do care about red, yellows, and blues as well, but uh, purples and whites are my priority, so yeah, that's basically that. 
In fact, actually, there's even more incentive to um, save as much purples as you can because there will be a treasure that we're going to be getting. Um, yeah, spoilers. But there is a treasure we're going to be getting uh, not too long from now that will actually require 100 purple pigment. Like, I'm not even kidding. So that's that's another reason why you want to be as conservative with purple with purples as you can. Um, but yeah, once you get rid of all the enemies and like the especially the cannon beetles, then this war becomes really harmless and easy to go through. So yeah, not much to worry about. But yeah, this is definitely one of my least favorite suballs in the entire game. Uh, but it's also home to what is I believe the actually the largest treasure in the entire game, and that's this thing right here. Um, and yeah, there's an eggshell that's gonna drop down on us, but we don't care about that because they can't kill big men. As long as they're not bombs, which we're not gonna have to worry about, at least in this dungeon, but we will have to worry about in future dungeons where there will actually be bombs that drop from the ce from the ceilings onto you. Um, actually, come to think of it, have we even encountered bombs yet? Uh, that might be a minor spoiler, but yes, there are bomb rocks in this game, but we'll be getting to those as soon as we encounter them, you know, or at least more than if we haven't already, because I can't, I don't know for sure, but eh, it's not really that important of a spoiler. So here we go, Sulking Antana, yes. At least I consider it to be one of the largest treasures in the game, but it's, it's basically what it seems like. Okay, so are we completely done with this side of the sub level? I believe we are. I mean, unless we don't have any leaf picking, which it looks like we do have at least like one yellow with us, that's a leaf, so we're going to take care of that now, since we have the opportunity to. Uh, but once we're done with that, we're going to take on the other half of the sublevel. Okay, here we go. Alright, uh, we're not going to bring the... Uh, you know what? Might as well. Let's just bring all the pigment with us. Normally when I do do this sublevel, I just have the purple pigment just destroy everything. You know, all the enemies, but um, this time I guess it wouldn't hurt to have all the others with us. Okay, this guy's very annoying, because now there's like... Since the barrier he he's in is circular, there's really no no way around it, basically. Uh, okay, there we go. It didn't go as bad as it usually does, but oh well. Okay, and also, um, speaking of, you know, ye red, yellow, and blue Pikmin being more disposable than purple Pikmin, look at this. Violet Candy pop up. We're going to take advantage of that. We're going to convert five of our yellows into purples. In fact, if anything, this is actually good because it means that since they're now purple instead of yellow, I'm actually going to... These these lucky guys will be more uh, protected under me. There we go. <laughs> oh man, I'm just so cruel to red, yellows, and blues, you know. How I just prior prioritize the purples and whites over them. I'm very cruel like that. I'm a very cruel Pikmin owner like that. <laughs> But actually, come to think of it, aside from that failed uh, attempt at this sub level, I don't think I've actually had any Pikmin deaths so far. I mean, like, I might be just forgetting something since I haven't, you know, recorded this Let's Play in a few months, but still. Uh, is there anything over here? Probably just another egg shell that will drop from the sky. And hopefully... Uh, no, we don't want that. That's a, that's a Queen Candy Pop Bud. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to get our purples and we're going to kill this dwarf bulba here. Um, I believe I actually killed all the um, armor cannabis, so I don't think we have to worry about them, do we? At least I don't think so. Yeah, it looks like we killed all of them, so... This basically is a much safer sub-level now, although we're still missing one treasure, so... Where could that treasure be? Um, there's two small areas that we haven't explored. I believe they're just pathways, actually. Yeah, pathways that are just there just to fill up space, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, this is definitely not where the other treasure is. There's two treasures on this floor. We got the first one, so we need to find the second one. Which, if I remember correctly, I do believe it's a party hat or something like that. No, maybe I don't think it's a party hat. It's like some sort of um, thing that pops confetti out of it. Like, I don't know what those things are called, but you, like... You pull a string and it pops like confetti out of them. I think that's what I think that's what this treasure actually is. I used to think that was a party hat, but I could be wrong. I could very easily be wrong. And it wouldn't be the first time I was wrong about something in a game that I play. But uh, seriously, where is that freaking treasure? Is it over here? No, it's not. Where is it? Where is that treasure, actually? Did I miss am I missing something here? 
because we've explored pretty much every... We've explored this whole dungeon, so where could it be? Uh, I am very confused here. Very, very confused. Oh, there it is. It was literally on the same in the same area as the Sulky Antan. That's dumb. Well, shoot, I didn't even have to do that other part of the sub-level. I could have just gotten this treasure and then gone out of here. But oh well. At least we got, you know, more Pocos, I guess. More extra Pocos, but... Still, really, in the long run, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So, we're gonna get Louie with us so we can do this, uh... Lich again and get some, get some extra, uh... Ultra Bitter Spray with us. Which is really cool to have. <laughs> Sorry, I had to burp there. I ho hopefully I didn't... Uh, oops. Thank you for interrupting me, cutscene. Alright, Boom Cone. Very good. Okay. Now it's... Are you freaking kidding me? The purple drop you see contains con re refined ultra bitter essence. One drop contains one dose. I could have swore I already explored the, I mean, already encountered drops of this potion, but oh well. Alright, well, either way, at least we got that out of the way, so now we can do this glitch. It's going to be a little difficult since, like, we're kind of close to the wall here, but not too difficult. But yes, just like with the ultra spicy spray, you can find drops of the spray like within eggshells on occasion but most times still gonna be nectar um so yeah that's four things you could potentially see in eggshells it's either nectar um ultra spicy ultra bitter spray or matites but with that y'all we are done with one of the most painful sub levels of this entire game and we are now ready to take on the final sub level of gluten's kitchen that means we're gonna have ourselves a boss but this boss is gonna be actually pretty unique actually it's a very interesting boss fight, actually. In fact, it actually... You don't even fight this boss formula like you do the rest of the bosses in this game. You'll see what it means as we get there.